So with these questions we've been looking at so far, you could also be asked to work out the mean or the standard deviation um, in a particular situation instead of being told those things. This video is going to show you how to work out the mean. So here's our example. Alfie's scores on internals follow a normal distribution with a standard deviation of 0 0.8. The probability that he scores more than 16 is 75%. What's his mean score? So that'll look like this. We've got a normal distribution. The mean, we're going to call mu because we don't know what it is. That's the thing that we're going to work out. The standard deviation we're told is 0 0.8. And we've got this marker here of 16 in the question. And the probability he scores more than 16 is 75%, which means we want everything on the right to be 75%. That means it's got to be less than the mean for that to happen, since there's a half on each side of the mean. So this area here will make the 75%. So how are we going to work out the mean from that? We could use the inverse normal, but the problem there with our graphics calculator, if we're putting inverse normal in, we need the details of the mean to be able to work it out. So the the options you're you're trying to put into your calculator, we don't actually have them all. We know the standard deviation, we know the, the x value of 16, we know the probability of point. 75, but we don't know the mean. We can only do that on the z curve. Now remember back to the first couple of videos on normal distribution. Z was the standardized normal uh, that looks like this, where you've got that normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Now if we work out the inverse normal on this situation with those two values, we then can put in the standard deviation and the mean because we know them both. We'll have this 75% um, value there and we can use that to work out which number on that z curve uh, would give us this 75% above it. So we're using our inverse normal and the details we'll put in is that we've got a right tail, the mean is 1, the standard deviation is 0 and the probability is 0 0.75. When you do that you get your answer of z being minus 0 0.671. You can, of course, also use the tables to read off that value by looking for uh, which z value would give you that chance of 0.75 um, on the, the left-hand side of the mean. OK, so what's next then? Take a look at your um, tables and it will tell you that z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. So that z value will be the x number we were looking up, subtract the mean, divide it by sigma. So on our original distribution, x was 16, the mean we don't know, that's what we're trying to work out, and the standard deviation was 0.8. And that will be equal to this z value we just looked up of minus 0 0.671. And we'll just take this over to the next page to see what to do with it. So we're rearranging, we'll multiply over by uh, 0 0.8, that becomes minus 0.5368. Then from there we will subtract the 16 from both sides and we get it equal to minus mu. Put those things together and we get the minus 16.54 is equal to minus mu, which of course means that mu is equal to 16.54. So the mean score that Alfie gets on internals is 16.54. Okay, example number two. The time in minutes that Jordan is put onto the field for each of his rugby games is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 12. In 10% of his games, he spends more than 75 minutes on the field. What's the mean time Jordan is on the field during his rugby games? So draw yourself a picture. We're trying to work out the mean mu. Now this 10% is that he will spend more than 75 minutes on the field, so that's the top 10% of all the time spent um, during his games. That will be above 75. Then we've got a standard deviation is 12. Now how does this relate to the z-curve? Because we can't do our calculations that we want to do in the inverse normal when we don't know the mean. So let's put this into terms of z. That would have a standard deviation of 1 and a mean of 0. So then what number would have to go here on the z-curve so that we have 10% lying above it? So do your inverse normal on the calculator, put
putting in a mean of 0, a standard deviation of 1, and a probability of 0.1, and you get the z value 1.281. Now that means x minus mu over sigma equals 1.281. So we'll replace that x with the 75 that we know it is. Replace sigma with the 12 from our situation. And then do some rearranging. So 75 minus mu is going to be 1.281 times 12. That becomes 15.372. We're then going to subtract the 75. So minus mu becomes minus 59.692, and then of course that means that mu is 59.692. Now don't forget to put it into context and put your units. So that'll be 59.692 minutes. That's the average time that Jordan is actually put on the field to play during each of his rugby games.